Hey, how's it going? It's Demond Knight. We're here to talk about tribal sovereignty today. Tribal sovereignty. A nation within a nation. A, a separate entity. A separate nation. We've heard this plenty of times. This is what you see in federal recognized communities agendas all their papers anything on their website you go you've heard your elder and people say from all ages women men that i'm a sovereign we're sovereign i'm a sovereign entity i have immunity i'm gonna go ahead and just read a few case laws so please bear with me so I'm going to be skimming through it because I'm assuming that you want to just get this video quick um, I'm not here to debate I'm not here to convince I'm reading case law citing case law citing everything I am not speaking about what I emotionally feel. My emotions, I feel I'm sovereign. That's not it. I'm not speaking I'm sovereign because I was told that by him over there, that guy in the suit with the ponytail. He said I'm sovereign. He said he's sovereign. Must be sovereign. I'm not reading a website. I'm not a, a, a person's opinion. This is simply reading. This is black and white in between the lines. And am I here to say I know everything? Hell no. This is one thing I do know is that IRA structured tribes, the 1934 Act, when our ancestors adopted the IRA, it, it, that wasn't what made them not sovereign. This is the act of Congress where Indian communities, a group of people can uh, practice economics and community development with the sovereignty of being able to pos uh, possess an eagle feather and uh, practice their culture. That's the only sovereignty in the 1934 Act. Section 1617, these communities are corporate charter communities. They only inherit certain powers. And, and why you have to ask yourself, too, is why is it that these tribes, the, the ending of such and such and such community, community, I thought we're talking about a sovereign nation. A public law 280 is another reference point I'll be using today. Public law 280, that is a very clear, I mean, clear cut law there. And that's a public law. It's a, I believe, you know, that's not a, a federal statute. These are the things where, you know, we got people out here really thinking they're sovereign. And, and am I shaming these people? No, but you are misleading, miseducating, and misidentifying yourself and many people. So I'm going to skim through this right here. So it says, a foreign order can consider whatever aspects of a foreign court proceeding it deems relevant. Uh, there is no single standard for determining the effect of such uh, adjudications in state court. In 2004, the Minnesota Supreme Court adopted M, Minnesota abbreviated, R dot gen, G E N, practice 10, rule 10. Okay, that provides guidelines for recognition and enforcement of tribal court orders and judgments. Okay, so now federally recognized tribes have tribal courts. They have uh, a similar uh, structure to local county governments. Okay, we can agree to that. Rule 10 requires recognition of tribal court orders and judgments where only 
mandated by state or federal statute. Okay, let me read that again. Uh, Rule 10 requires recognition of uh, tribal court orders and judgments only where already mandated by state or federal statute. You ever read something and it says... Uh, and and when you're reading your case law in 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 a in a tribal court and this says ordinance as amended that how is as amended or ordinance have anything to do with the uh, mandated state or federal statute okay so we're just getting into it we're not mandated by statute the rule uh, provides a non-exclusive list of uh, factors for a court to consider in determining whether to recognize and enforce a tribal court order or judgment. See uh, Kevin K. Washburn, uh, Chloe Thompson, A Legacy of Public Law 280, comparing and contrasting Minnesota's new rule for recognition of tribal court judgments with recent Arizona Rule 31. Uh, when? Uh, so what I just said, Public Law 280, um, as... Um, as a federal statute it's a state statute okay so right there we got that to reference from and uh this will go right into here uh recognition of tribal court orders and judgments under rule 10 minnesota statute 548.35 tribal court uh, adjudications are not entitled to full faith and credit under the United States Constitution. Okay, which provides only for full faith and credit for public acts, records, judicial proceedings of every other state. U.S. Constitution, Article 5, Section 1. However, states uh, and federal statutes have conferred uh, the, uh, the uh, relevant of full faith and credit status on some tri uh, tribal adjudications by mandating that they be enforced in state court okay so now this is the united states telling you that all your matters are going to be enforced in state court okay so and uh going down to now i will skip a little bit bear with me we are gonna go into now uh, you know, it's saying state. What is a state? What is a state? You know, it's very important for you to even understand what a state is. So, here, we'll go ahead and read it. As they are not judgment rendered by states, they are not necessarily foreign judgments of foreign states either. And they uh, remain excluded from full faith and credit provision of the United States Constitution as noted above, uh, the undersigned judge has been unable to find any controlling legal authority that holds that an Indian tribe is a foreign state defined by the UFCMJRA or that the UFCMJRA is conclusively applicable to tribal court judgments. Uh, the United States Constitution Disclink, uh, dis, dis, uh, let me go down a little bit. Uh, the United States Constitution between foreign nations and Indian tribes and the review of relevant case law indicates the following. Indian tribes retain attributes of sovereignty over both their members and their territories. So this is where you have the right to your own, to determine your own membership. Okay, this is uh, you being able to uh, you as in the, uh, the federally recognized community purchase land uh, from fee land into trust land. Okay, so that's your membership territory. Tribal sovereignty is dependent on and only federal governments, uh, only on the federal. Okay, so go back. Tribal sovereignty is dependent on only on the federal government not the states no so now that's the federal government saying that you're dependent not on the state on the federal government so when people are saying we're a nation within a nation you're a community within a state that's a state that's within the, the united states 
I mean, you you almost just jumped a whole bunch of steps. I mean, you're you're playing hopscotch and you just missed a couple of squares. So now, as it says right here, um, Indian tribes are not states. Let me read that again, uh, and, and let me recite the uh, the the statute too. The um, 755N.W.2D736 dot dot comma 739 Minnesota 2008. Indian tribes are not states. Nevertheless, they possess a kind of sovereignty superior of that of states, but inferior to that of the federal government. Uh, Indian tribes have elsewhere been described as domestic dependent nations uh the their uh, going does not lead to the conclusion that an indian tribe is an independent foreign nation or a foreign state what is a state what when they're saying foreign state um you know i know a lot of you know what i mean by foreign you, you got a foreign car you know you're wearing foreign clothes uh it, a foreign state now, so let's use Minnesota as, uh, as an example. Uh, this is out of the 50 stars, 50 states uh, adopted the United States Constitution and then became a United State. Minnesota in 1858. Okay, so, um, so then, so you're not even to the, you're not even a foreign state. So then uh, the state, okay does not have any more authority federal law trumps state law okay that go look it up you know again i'm not here to debate i'm not here to convince um you know this is the conclusion of what uh your oppressor um what the federal government identifies you as as a domestic dependent nation now uh when you're dependent on somebody uh that means you're not independent okay that's when they say the independence of the declaration and independence i'm an independent i know a lot of you out here yelling i'm independent you know so domestic uh dependent nations so what is this i thought it was a nation within a nation you know this is the manipulation and, and i'm not bashing nobody okay you you've been telling people this get educated on it you've been falsely telling people uh that they're sovereign or that you're a sovereign within a sovereign and one would ask, well, what about the treaties? You know, all these treaties still not treated right. You know, when Congress, when the treaties were being signed all through the late 1700s, uh, middle, uh, early 18th century, middle 18th century, uh, the last for uh, the, the tribe I'm from, the 1858 uh, Dakota Treaty, um, decades went by. Okay, so we're getting conquered, we're getting, uh, we're suffering genocide. Uh, Congress is looking around saying, uh, these people who we just signed treaties with, they're, they're not acting as nations. Okay, so uh, what, what does that mean when you're not acting as a nation or you're unable to act as a nation, then you become a ward of your oppressor. So now the Organic Act in the uh, 1880s or uh, 1870s, uh, now you're a ward of the of Congress. You're a ward to the government. They're like they they cannot organize. They cannot structure. Um, they're not uh, acting as a nation. See, a nation has their own currency. A nation, uh, you do not need a passport to go gamble at one of these casinos. Okay, you can drive your vehicle straight into one of these reservations, and you do not need to present no federal ID, no passport. I mean, obviously, maybe, you know, security shakes you down. You got to show them your state ID or your tribal ID card there. But um, but nevertheless, that this is not, you know, when I go to Canada or when I go to Africa, I have to present this uh, foreign nation, my foreign nation identification. And so when you start putting the two and two together, why are they saying this? Like, you know, it's, it, it, this is something where there's so much case law where they don't, you know, th they've made it very clear. And then you've got people who are uh, saying, I have immunity or qualified immunity or all this immunity. And um, 
And let me see right here. You know, I'll, I'll read one more. Uh, the main argument is the tribal court adjudications uh, that are not entitled to be relevant, uh, relevant of full faith and credit under a state or federal statute are governed by Rule 10.02 of the Minnesota Rules of General Practice. Um, rule 10.02 gives the state court total discretion uh, and it can consider whether aspects of the foreign court proceeding it deems relevant. So now this is the federal government telling states that you can deem what's relevant if if you don't think this is a foreign court, you can deem what's relevant. You know, I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. I mean, even Stevie Wonder could read this and copy, you know, go ahead and get the idea with this where um uh and then it just goes to district court refuses to recognize the judgment. You know, this is tribes, communities, Irish communities going to court saying I'm sovereign. I'm I'm breaking the law cuz I'm sovereign. You can't sue me. I'm sovereign. You can't tell me what to do. We just passed the ordinance. We just passed an amendment as amended. As of the 1934 act, we are a sovereign nation. You know, that's saying that you, like here's a a tree of fruit. Apple and peaches. But you are missing all the other fruits, but you are riding on hey, I got two fruits i got this fruit tree with two fruits but there are so many other fruits and i mean fruits as in countries and right civilly um the, the way that ira communities are structured is that the secretary of interior holds power and oversees all things of these ira communities how can you as a federal nation, a federal, a foreign state, a foreign nation, um, how do you have to get approval from a, a department, a federal agency? Or, I mean, aren't you sovereign? I mean, does a, does an African have to ask the United States to hunt their lands? Does uh, does Europe have to ask the United States to, uh, if it's all right, if I make my own currency? These are just things that you can think on, and, and and I and if you wrote down or if you gotta skip through the video, Rule Ten of Minnesota uh, Minnesota Rules General Practices, your United States Constitution, uh, Public Law Two Eighty, uh, the Organic Act, and uh, the uh, Indian Commission's uh, uh, claims reports. Go through those files, and and then. Um, you go ahead and ask yourself after all that reading that are Native American tribes sovereign? Are they not governed by another government entity? You know, the, I think there's one more part here The for those who stayed. Uh, let me see if I can just find it off the top of my head. Um... So that case I was reading, you always go down to the bottom and it says conclusions. Accordingly, based upon the above, the court declines to recognize or enforce the enterprise community tribal uh, court judgment. Enterprises. Doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, uh, own and operate and uh, the, such and such enterprise. I mean, this is a, a group of people who are uh, organizing business, uh, conducting business as an enterprise and uh, consist of uh, shareholders and um, that share the same nationality. Now, those are two different things, you know. So, all right. It's Demond, Demond Knight. Demond, as in the man, thank you for watching. Have a good night.